Good morning. Welcome to another day in my workshop. just getting ready for a holiday. I have a lot of work to do, a lot of things to finish. So you're not going to see a lot of start to finish repairs, but you're going to see me finishing a lot of work. So uh, I'm, I'm just making sure I get everything ready for clients to pick up before I go away. So I'm at the moment, I've almost finished two bridges. One is for this violin. It's an old German violin that belong to a family and this one here is another violin that's getting played by a I think she plays quite a lot of folk music I because I'm going away I didn't actually have time to clean and polish this violin so I'm gonna do that when I get back because she had some problems with the bridge and the sound so in the meantime I'm gonna put on a new bridge I've planed the fingerboard, so that's looking really nice. So I'm gonna get that finished. I have the Smith violin came back, had some problems with opening joints. The varnish used on this instrument, I believe that um, some English makers did that to make the timber look really beautiful and old. They may have soaked some of the timber in turpentine and linseed oil. That actually makes those areas very difficult to glue or the glue to hold. They end up coming undone very easily and we've had some very wet times and so again it had a buzz and this time it was the bottom block that had come undone. You know, I used the same glue so you would have seen the Smith violin repair earlier in the year and I'd use the same glue for other instruments that have and cracks and things like that that have held no problems but uh, you know this one is just a looser bond because of that light oiliness so it's a, it's a bit of a tricky one the other thing I'm doing I've, I've got a couple of instruments with crack repairs that I'm just finishing up they're getting picked up tomorrow so this one here had a massive crack here right through there so the case the instrument was in accidentally got jammed underneath something and so it caused a couple of cracks but uh, he will hardly be able to see them uh, so one of the cracks is just here and I'm just in the finishing touches uh, of finishing that one I've got a full service I have to do for an instrument that so that's planing the fingerboard cleaning and polishing servicing pegs and and sound posts and things like that I had a five string violinist and cellist from Canada who came over and her fingerboard had fallen off of the cello so she's coming to pick it up this morning great thing is that her a bandmate actually watches my videos and so when the fingerboard came off and they landed in Brisbane she said oh no my fingerboard came off and he said I know just the guy to go to the band's called in echo from Canada and they're playing all around Australia they're a folk band probably sort of Irish leaning folk band so very exciting but a bit stressful when you get to a foreign country and your fingerboard has come off so first of all I'm gonna take those um, clamps off that cello and I have to get it finished because the client is literally coming in an hour all right, I'm gonna take the cello back into it, to my workbench to wash all the glue off. So I'm gonna finish tightening the strings already. So the problem they have in Canada is that it's really, really dry. Whereas the problems we have here on the east coast of Australia is that it can get incredibly humid. That's gonna be a bit of a change. So um, they're playing quite a few gigs at festivals, like folk festivals and things like that. She's gonna have to really protect her instrument against the humidity. We had a bit of a chat about it yesterday. Some of those pegs are a bit stiff. I just can't let that <laughs> slide, so I'm... I'm uh, I'm going to put some peg paste on uh, some of these pegs first. It's horrible when your pegs don't tune easily. You had a gig and you want to tune. So uh, I'm just quickly going to do that. I know she's got fine tuners, so that's going to make life a lot easier. And I'm, I'm a huge supporter of fine tuners for like if you're gigging and you might have to often retune the instrument. If you know, if you don't have really strong hands or have some slight trouble tuning, there's nothing wrong with um, with having a fine tuning tail piece like this. It just makes your life easier. And uh, you know, I know it's a matter of pride for some musicians to to be able to tune with the pegs, but what if the pegs don't work properly and you're, you're you know, 
and that's that's a problem that not you know the pegs have to be perfectly round uh, so they have to fit really well and you've got to um, have the peg paste on watch my video on pegs anyway and then uh, and then you've got to have the strings ran on right so uh, if you've got all that your pegs should turn very easily and it wouldn't be much of a problem but you know a lot of people don't actually have the pegs fit it exactly right okay that's all done okay so I'm just gonna wipe the rest of the glue off and I'm gonna let that dry and then just at the end I'm gonna give it just a very 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 fine sand just to make sure that there's absolutely no step between the neck and the fingerboard because that can be really off-putting when you're playing but usually I mean I, I, I glue it you know, I'm very spot on with my gluing so that, that it matches this. There shouldn't be a step at all. But it looks to me like there's a slight difference between the size of the neck and the fingerboard. So on one side here, we've just got a very light step. So I'll be getting rid of that. So on the other side, that's absolutely, there is no step. Just using the finest grade of sandpaper now, just to make sure this is super smooth, and nice and easy to work with for the player. And uh, I'm just going to test the cello a little bit and then it'll be ready, you know, just make sure that nothing else got damaged during the flight. And, uh, you know, then she can go on their tour of the east coast of Australia. Okay, so that's going to be picked up soon. All right, I did most of the, uh, the these two bridges last night. So I've just got to do the final um, sanding. There is one thing I forgot, and that's my morning meditation. And uh, I will do that right now. I'm grateful for every day. I get to have on this wonderful planet that I get to spend meeting amazing people and making their lives and my lives richer. Okay, so that's gone through all the sandpapers. It's nice and finely sanded. I've just got to do the finishing touches. Looks like it's gonna be a really warm day today in Brisbane. Okay, that's all done. I will put these away and uh, then I just check over this cello. Just checking the uh, sun post adjustment on here. I'm not a cellist. Oi, I'm happy with that. Now we've just got to wait for the uh, clients to come. Come on in, guys. <laughs> it's all back in one piece again. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it must be a bit unnerving when you, uh, yeah, when you arrive in a sure. different country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like she was shaking, she's like, something's rattling. I mean, I don't know what difference that makes with a pickup, it probably doesn't make as much of a difference. But... Yeah, I use a clip on mic now, so oh, cool. I don't use the pickup just because oh. been, I've been having issues with it. Yeah, you mentioned that, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Okay. The the <laughs> you a bit there we go, we got a crowd now, what do you <laughs> Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, see you later. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, you too. <sighs> what a group of nice guys. Back into the workshop and back into it. No rest. So next I am going to, yeah, I've got a, uh, a crack repair to finish. So I want to really get on top of that. Yeah, so that'll be my first, my next step. See if I can get this crack finished for this afternoon. Just gonna let this one dry. So I've got the second one I'm working on, which is, uh, yeah, it's these cracks here. And that one's much further along, so I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a sand and a polish. 
because I've taken the top plate off this violin, I've got to polish all in the uh, like the edges where the top plate joins the sides. I've got to repolish that. It's kind of funny when you don't polish the whole instrument, uh, the player will just have this crack area beautifully polished and the edges beautifully polished, uh, like the, the little corners, but not, <laughs> not the whole instrument. One crack was down from the bottom of the F hole down here. There was another one from the top up to here and then a third crack just in here in the uh it, it's very i don't know if you can it, it's not much you can see really uh because uh like if, if you ever do get a crack in your instrument just don't touch it and bring it straight to violin maker a skilled violin maker and a skilled violin maker should be able to make the crack disappear. You know, it's it's distressing enough when your instrument, your beautiful instrument, gets a crack. What's more distressing is when you when it gets badly repaired afterwards. And I've seen that happen, and it's horrendous. And also, if you don't get it repaired straight away and touch, you know, you must never touch the edges of the crack because there's little bits of varnish and things like that, and you can. With, even with your thumb or with your finger, just with your skin, if you go across it, you can just snap that off. And, and each little bit that chips off makes it harder to repair the crack. So you just leave the area, take the string tension down and take your instrument to a qualified repairer straight away. That's the best thing to do if you ever have a crack in your instrument. On this Smith violin, I'm just going to put varnish in uh, the joints where I did the gluing. Hey, that's got to dry some. I've waited a little bit of time so I can actually put some more varnish on this crack here. It's a very beautiful day outside today, so I'm definitely going to go for a bike ride. So uh, I actually need to plane a fingerboard as well. It's for one of the repair jobs I've got on. Just trying to think whether I should do it now or later. Because I have some Pierre Lamont violins to set up as well. Well, I might do this violin. I might just put the strings on this violin uh, first. Uh, get that all sorted. And then I'll do some fingerboards this afternoon. Okay, uh, so with this violin, uh, I, I love finishing instruments, you know, and just hearing the first sound come from it so I'm going to put the strings on this violin uh, but I just want to quickly call the client to confirm uh, what strings to use so I'll quickly ask her okay I'm going to make an executive decision here and I'm going to put a new tail piece on this violin because the other one is quite dodgy and it'll sound metallic and I'm also going to put new strings on Okay, so I'm gonna go on lunch now. I'm just gonna let that hang up. Uh, I will do one more little coat of varnish on that crack repair, just to make sure that's all dried when I come back from lunch. Gee, it's warm today. It's a really warm day. We're off to our favorite Vietnamese today. Gotta love a good uh, Vietnamese salad. All right, we got my Vietnamese salad and my favorite cafe. We did get coffee, but I kind of forgot to film it because I got chatting to some people. These things happen. You've gotta love spring, everything's flowering. Oh, I'm back from lunch. Went for a bit of a longer bike ride. I had to buy some things too, so got a bit sidetracked. Spent a bit of time in the city looking at things. Anyway, uh, I'll get back into it. I've got to finish this baby here. Yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding. So I'm just going to put another two coats of varnish on there and then let it dry. Then I'll just polish it and then it should be good to go. So put just a little bit more varnish. It's been a little while. I'll let that dry. At the same time, I'll put a tiny bit more varnish on the joints of the Smith violin. That's protected everything that needs to be protected here, so that's good. I'm actually really happy with this. This is the one with the cracks. So for that one, I'm just going to be putting on the strings. So that'll be all ready to go. It's getting picked up 
um, tomorrow as well, I think. So I think he'll be super happy. It's almost impossible to see where the cracks are. So this is a violin that's come in for maintenance. It's come in from North Queensland. It's uh, the player use it for folk music. So I'm planing the fingerboard for her. I'm giving the whole instrument a clean and polish. I have actually found some open spots, but I'm going to plane the fingerboard first. So I usually plane the fingerboard before I clean the instrument because uh, it ends up with a lot of ebony dust on it. I prefer cleaning the instrument after I've made all the dust. Uh, and I'll do the gluing in between. So I can do that before I plan the fingerboard or after I plan the fingerboard. Now, if the gluing needed to be done up here, I'd probably do it after the planing the fingerboard just to make sure we don't get any ebony dust into the grooves. But uh, the instrument's open near the bottom. So I'll glue that straight after I've planed the fingerboard. And now I just got to wash my hands, they're gross. And, uh, and then I will glue these joints at the same time that can all dry together while the nut, the glue of the nut dries as well. Okay, the client's about to come and pick up this violin just with a crack that I did from the outside. I've just got to put the chin rest on and then give the whole instrument a little bit of a try. <laughs> So it's got like this really dull sound. Um, I, m some of my three quarter size violins sound a lot better, but at least the crack is fixed and they can get back into their playing. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly glue the joints on that other violin that I was working on before, the one where I uh, planed the fingerboard. Then I'm just gonna knock around the instrument and see if I can find any more open joints. No more buzzing. Well, I'm going to pop this away. I'm literally going to leave it till tomorrow. It's going to dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'm going to give it a clean and uh, and finish it up. Okay, uh, it's moving towards evening. Had a few family things on today. Just getting back in. I'm actually going to work into the evening again. I know I'm showing you a lot of videos where I do work into the evening. Believe me, I don't do it all the time. So with the, uh, with the Smith violin, I just want to polish these little areas quickly. And then I will put the chin rest on. Then the crack repair. I'll be putting the strings on that this evening. Because that's getting picked up tomorrow. Also that other violin's getting picked up. So I've got a few little jobs to finish. That's starting to look very nice. Oh, guess what? They're still buzz. Okay. I am not gonna worry about this tonight. That's in the too hard basket. It turns out that the base bar is coming loose. So I'm gonna have to glue on the base bar. I'll do that right now. We're gonna have to contact the client. He'll have to come another day. So I'm just putting some glue uh, underneath the base bar now. It's one of the first times that I've actually had this kind of repair that a base bar has come out of an instrument. It's kind of unheard of. Um, it should normally just be glued on so firmly that it never, ever, ever comes undone. So buzz can be literally one of over 130 things. So when I was working in Germany, the guys there worked out there was at least, at least 130 possibilities why an instrument could be buzzing and a bass bar coming apart is one of them. Doesn't happen often at all. It's exceptionally frustrating. Anyway, that's glued on now. I'm gonna let it dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll glue the top plate back on and hopefully everything will stay together then. Here's the violin where I've repaired the cracks. I'm just gonna pop the bridge and strings on. There we go. I've got the strings on, very happy with the way it looks, got the chin rest on. I'm, I'm literally not going to play it tonight, uh, I just wanted to kind of just settle in overnight, play that in the morning. And now it's just the final one for today, that is this one, so I've got to finish fitting the pegs 
and then it's just all the uh, you know chin rest, um, the the tail piece chin rest and that kind of stuff. So it's an interesting combination of pegs, but she really wanted me to fit the old pegs, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm basically giving the pegs the right shape, and I'm just gonna use a reamer to fit them, and then I have to sand the pegs. I'll sand the pegs first, actually. That's enough. So I'm just gonna do the final fitting, and then I'll cut the ends off. Okay, so let's just mark the ends. Oh, actually, I wanna put some peg paste on because it makes them um, slide through a bit further. They're looking good though, look at them. All right, now I'm just gonna mark these off and then I'm gonna nip across to the saw and uh, saw them shorter. So now I'm just gonna neaten up the ends. I'm just lowering the nut on this uh, violin, that was a bit high. Getting very close to putting the strings on this violin. Basically just got to give it another final polish up and uh, then it's time for the strings. Okay, I'm just putting the strings on this violin. I've given it a bit of a polish up. I'm going to do a tiny bit more in the morning, but now I am just putting the strings on. I made the bridge before you saw me make it. Um, you guys must think that I work into the night all the time. I don't. I, I do maybe two evenings a week, but to me it's really important to have some time during the day. So quite often I'll have about two hours or, or even longer during the day where I, uh, you know, just spend some time uh, uh, connecting with friends and things like that. And, uh, you know, just got to... Gotta find your own rhythm, I think. So I don't mind working into the evening at the moment. Uh, also, like I said, we're going overseas, so I'm getting a bunch of things finished. I'm literally trying to empty my workshop of most repairs. So when I come back, I can start with a really clean slate. I think I've got three more repairs left, like big repairs that I won't be able to get uh, to finish. Uh, one I'm gonna make a video about um, it's it's quite a mess that one it's a cello that uh, that was basically floating in the floods so it's fully come apart so I'll be reassembling that what did they do to the sound post <laughs> I've never had to do this but I, think I might have to saw through this sound post this is new yeah it's like totally in the wrong place so that had a lot of tension. That could have done some damage if I uh, didn't know that. Um, all right, I'm just gonna test this other sound post I have here. So this is one I fitted recently, but I've fitted it too short, so I can just fit that one to, to this violin. That was definitely something new. I don't think I've ever had to cut a sound post in half because it was jammed in there so tightly. It probably left a mark though, the, the original one. I am happy with that. I am literally, I'm quite tired. So I'm going to finish up for today. I'll let those strings settle in. Uh, it's been wonderful having you join me. I've had a good day, uh, met some wonderful people. Like I said, I'm just getting ready for travel overseas. So uh, just clearing out a lot of my repairs. But it's always wonderful inviting you into my workshop. I think it's so important for you guys to really understand what goes into making an instrument, getting it sounding really well, but also what goes into like how an instrument works. And you can have your instrument optimized so that it's firstly the easiest to play, but it also sounds the best. Your instrument is your voice. It's how you express yourself. So you really want to find an instrument that matches your voice and the way you want to express yourself. And so hopefully, you know, hopefully I'm helping you understand that a bit better. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I love this community. I love helping you guys understand things more. Uh, remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. And I'll see you guys next time. So keep making beautiful music. See ya. Thank you.